question number one. If an elderly individual who is at a healthy weight but under muscled starts resistance training, should they be eating a caloric surplus to build muscle given that they are eating enough protein? Uh, well, okay, this is a good question. Uh, in general, I don't know that I recommend anybody for weight gain unless they want to. So if their personal preference is I'd like to gain weight for whatever reason, either strength is the most important thing to them and they have, a, uh, they have their room to grow, that's fine. If they wanna gain more muscle mass just uh, for their own accord, that's fine. But just for like reducing the potential of bad health outcomes from happening, you can do that without gaining a substantial amount of body weight. And a person new to resistance training is, has a high likelihood of building a lot of lean body mass without increasing their body weight. We see that all the time in individuals with obesity. They simultaneously reduce their waist circumference and body fat while increasing their lean body mass. Um, and then in, in particular, uh, I don't know that gaining uh, a bunch of weight at an elderly age is uh, likely to be a great idea just because- If they're already at a healthy, healthy weight, yes. as is yes. kind of a qualifier in the question. I mean, I see a lot of elderly folks who are extremely underweight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's not often that I see individuals who are like, have made it into their 80s with morbid obesity. Oftentimes they don't, they get kind of selected out a little bit earlier than that. For, through various mechanisms, things that we've talked about this weekend, the medical conditions that can arise. Um, so oftentimes the people who make it that far tend to be pre pretty thin and frail on the other end of the spectrum. In those situations, then uh, getting adequate nutrition and putting them into a calorie surplus, if we can, does become a priority. But if somebody is already at a healthy weight, then I would just lean on getting them to train rather than worrying about getting them in a calorie surplus. Well, you know what the internet's gonna say. What? Don't you know that in elderly population that class one obesity has the lowest all-cause mortality rates. How do you explain that? The question is saying that they're at a healthy weight. So then I would ask how we're defining healthy weight here. Sure. You know, well, are, what I'm getting at is, is that explanation uh, it basically ignores, again, a few things that Dr. Baraki said. So individuals, individuals who tend to carry uh, a lot of excess adipose tissue tend to get filtered out when we get to that elderly population. So they tend to not make it uh, that far. And uh, those who do, there's, obviously there's a survivor bias there. Uh, and in addition, uh, once you become elderly, uh, having a low BMI, so like in normal or particularly underweight represents either chronic illness or increase in frailty. And so both of those things portend bad outcomes. We wouldn't necessarily want somebody who's got a normal BMI or is slightly in the, the lower realms of the overweight BMI range to necessarily say, I gotta get my BMI to over 30 because that's gonna reduce my risk of premature mortality or right. reduce disease burden. Yep. All right, sick, we took on the internet. There you go. Boom. Boom.